Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Nick Cox. I will be speaking on Tuesday, January 12th at the HM Seminar about perturbing ideals and arbitrary ethereum local rings and the emetic continuity of over Coombs multiplicity. Um, I'm a graduate student at the University of Missouri in Columbia, by the way. Okay, so let me tell you what I'm going to talk about uh, very briefly. Uh, the story begins in 2018 probably really begins before that, but the result that motivated me is from 2018. It's from Thomas Polstra and Ilyas Mirnoff. And it says that if R is a F finite Cohen McCulley local ring, and I is a parameter ideal, so it's an ideal generated by part of the system of parameters, such that after I complete mod out by I, I get something that's reduced, then the Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity exhibits this amazing kind of continuity when you perturb the generators of this ideal by elements and a big power of the maximal ideal. So Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity, if you don't know, I'll talk about it briefly um, on Tuesday, is an extremely interesting numerical invariant of local rings or also great rings and, and prime characteristic. Um, it's very difficult to compute, it's kind of mysterious, but it's also quite interesting. And um, I really am very interested in the values taken by this function, this, this invariant. So my goal or the goal of this project was to basically drop this cohen mccullin assumption. Um, so I wanna extend it somehow to arbitrary F finite local rings. And I have a blank page here. Um, to do that, I need to take sort of the pieces of the argument that 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 are necessary to make it work and and extend them. That's that's the idea, at least. There's this diagram of local rings that appears in the original proof of Thomas and Ilya, and I use it so much in my work that I've given it a special name. I call it diagram D. But this diagram consists of local rings. R, A, and R mod I, where I is an ideal in R. And the diagram is really just a finite extension, A into R mod I, that lifts, okay? So this comes about when R is complete. It can come about when R is complete by choosing assisted parameters on R mod I and a coefficient field. You get a finite extension from the Cohen structure theorem, and then you can lift, or at least this works in, in equal characteristic. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated mixed characteristic. So, they use this, this uh, construction in their proof. Um, and their argument is really about controlling discriminants of these quotients. It turns out that all this can be defined. And when you perturb the generators by sufficiently small elements, emetically small elements, you get discriminants that are emetically small in A. And that's sort of the linchpin of the argument. So the plan is to put as much structure as we need in place to, to run this outside of the Cohen McCulley case, um, which is subtle. I'll talk about that quite a bit. Um, I'm also going to talk about it, and I wanted to mention here that the conditions that, that are placed on this ideal I being perturbed in this result are pretty strong, right? It's a parameter ideal, but it's a parameter ideal inside of a Cohen McCulley ring. So it's generated by a regular sequence. Um, outside of the Cohen McCulley case, it's, it's definitely necessary to put some kind of nice condition on I. So basically, in the original result, there's a condition on R and a condition on I. In the generalization, we end up with just a condition on I. And it turns out that uh, requiring it to be generated by a regular sequence actually would work, but a slightly more general condition uh, sort of suggested itself when I was working on this stuff. So I'll talk about that a bit. And once I've done that, um, all that stuff kind of gets put together and some heavy lifting lemmas um, that I want to talk about, uh, sort of uh, all of these things allow you to prove these heavy lifting lemmas. So that sort of justifies the choice of this condition. And um, with that in place, modulo some tedious details about defining discriminants and dealing with torsion and things like that. The argument, the original argument goes through and uh, get a pretty satisfying result. Um, if there's time at the end, I'll tell you why 
it's not completely satisfying to me. So there are some conditions that I was sort of stuck with that I think, well, I don't know that I'm suspicious that they could be dropped somehow. Okay, that's, that's it. Um, please come to my talk if you're interested. I want to thank Sean and Eloisa very much for inviting me and for working with me to put this on. And uh, here's my email. And here is the name of my very long preprint about this stuff. Um, so feel free, of course, to email me if you have questions or just would like someone to talk to. Okay, thank you.